Let's talk about the notion of non-hierarchy, especially how it pertains to crazed non-hierarchy um, crusaders who run around into various leftist organizations and attempt to destroy those organizations from inside with their non-hierarchy nonsense. Uh, first of all, I'm not out to attack any leftist organizations or any leftist trains of thought or people in it, except unless you're in maybe that 1% who wants to run around and yell and scream about how we need to get rid of the hierarchy. Um, first of all, if someone checks out the book A Brief History of Everything by philosopher Ken Wilber, they will see a detailed explanation of where this non-hierarchy philosophy comes from and why it is complete and utter nonsense. The entire cosmos, including the physical, the biological, consciousness, is all one nested hierarchy in, in, in another. Everywhere you look is hierarchy. A hierarchy is simply some type of organization where you have a bunch of holons. A holon is something which is a whole unit unto itself, but yet is also part of some larger system. So if we look at a molecule of water, oxygen is a holon. Oxygen is one whole atom, but it is also part of something greater such as a molecule. And the cells in our bodies are holons. They are part, they are in part individual and part, some, part of something greater. If you're in a family, then you are a holon. There's yourself and as an individual, there's also your individual family unit, or you can consider yourself a whole on in all of human society. You cannot escape hierarchy. The whole universe is nested hierarchies, and 99% of hierarchies are more or actually beneficial. So the very idea that you're going to fight hierarchy is kind of saying that you want to fight the structure of the universe. It is the most untenable, nonsensical idea that anyone could possibly conceive of, yet this non-hierarchy um, notion kind of sinks into people and then they run off um, crusading for it. So where does this come from? It's a value system disorder um, that you um, can see in fact certain people on, I guess for lack of a better word, we can say left or liberal minded people, where they get this notion one day that all people and all perspectives are equally valid. Now, it actually takes a, uh, a person that has a rather deeply evolved value system to even try to ponder such a concept. This um, is someone who starts to develop empathy and they start to realize that there's partial validity to different perspectives and they want to um, have a world and they have a world view that wants to honor the perspective of lots of different people. Um, in the world of spiral dynamics if anyone is interested this is the green meme and if you want to know what if you don't know what spiral dynamics is just think about your stereotypical like hippie from the 60s or someone peace love John Lennon you know uh, imagine everyone come together, love one another, all that type of stuff. Um, that's this. That's the type of person that's going to go down the path leading to non-hierarchy. But this, the, how do I say? But the nice part about this is your understanding that everyone is uh, that there's a partial validity to their perspective. But then all perspectives are suddenly reduced down to being equal, which is nonsense. Um, you know. Is your worldview equal to that of a Nazi's? Probably not. So all value systems become flatlined in this non-hierarchy notion. The un the un another very um, dangerous side to this um, I idea of uh, of everyone being equal is that if everyone is equal, then that means that no one can have any better idea than you. Because you are somehow equal to everyone else. It doesn't matter how much wisdom anyone else has. It doesn't matter how much educated they are uh, on anything. They are only equal at, to you. Therefore, um, then we get people where they're like, hey, everyone is equal. I am equal to everyone. My ideas are just as good as everyone else's. And then they'll, they say, and then comes the notion that since everyone is equal, no, there should be no structure that could tell anyone what to do. And there comes the non-hierarchy. And because everyone is equal, we end up with the non-hierarchy crusader who will run into various left-wing organizations because you know their value system is aligned with certain 
ideas in one respect, but what they do in these organizations is they proclaim we need to get rid of hierarchy and ultimately will attack the organization they are in. They will start to crusade against it itself because it is impossible to have any organization whatsoever without hierarchy. So you can have a bunch of activists that are trying to do good work and all of a sudden here comes in the non-hierarchy crusader and next thing you know that group is in a lot of trouble because a lot of these more liberal minded groups they do want to honor the partial validity of everyone. They do want to allow everyone to express their opinion and, you know, and so forth and next thing you know you're letting this non-hierarchy person just bash everything because what happens is as soon as they see anyone who they perceive as attempted to control anything, they are attacking this person, this, this person is a control freak, this organization is just as good as what we want to um, fight against, and the non-hierarchy crusader will start to attempt to destroy the organizations that um, they should be supporting. The non-hierarchy crusader will attempt to create organizations that are not structured at all and cannot possibly work. I think the best example of this is Occupy Wall Street. When, you know, I was there in New York City for some of these meetings where they would go on for hours and hours and hours trying to get to some consensus on the most idiotic points because under these um, types of non-hierarchy frameworks that people attempt to build you know, everyone is valid, everyone has a, an expression, you know, that they could put forth, and it, it just becomes the most untenable mess, you know, imaginable, because there is no structure and you can't serve a so-called leader. But, you know, you have ten people in a room and you try to get them to do a project, you're going to end up with some type of leadership. But since the non-hierarchist does not want to actually create a real structure of organization that can facilitate the group, what they tend to do is um, create um, fake non-organization, which really leads to tyranny of the extrovert. And I have been at meetings where it's supposed to be everyone can have equal input and you just end up with these extroverted people taking over and, you, and there is no structure to stop them. And, you know, if you remember back in school, there was a little kid in the front of the class who would go, ooh, 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 every time the teacher said something, it had to interfere. Well, now, you know, this unorganized person has to raise their hand and speak at everything is suddenly just not shutting up in these meetings. And even if they mean good, you're now... You know, you can be, you don't even have a facilitator for the meeting. The meeting is supposed to facilitate itself, basically. And, and you know, what you end up with is a group that no one's going to participate in, uh, not because they've actually um, framed it in the, with, in the way that I'm doing, but because they can just see that this group cannot function whatsoever, so no one's going to become involved. And when you perhaps want to try to create some type of structure, then you get attacked because you're trying to create hierarchy. We have a bunch of people, I, 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 there's so many different anarchist philosophies where you know, people posting online about anarchism, we have to get rid of hierarchy. This makes no sense whatsoever in how you would organize a technologically advanced society without hierarchy. Because let's say you want to have a centralized water supply. Well, you need to set up some type of hierarchical structure even to supply water to people in a city, you know, and, and so forth. And are we just supposed to vote on everything if you need to build a bridge from one city to another instead of asking scientists how to or, or architects how to technically do this? Are we supposed to have a vote on how to do it? I mean, what, how, would you apply this in your personal life? If you have a medical issue, instead of going to um, a qualified practitioner, would you take a vote of everyone you know and ask them, um, you know, what you think you should, I should do, what do you think, and then just decide that everyone's opinion is equally valid as to what the uh, random opinion is? If, if your toilet is broken, are you going to take a vote? You, you know, exactly how far are we going to take this non-hierarchy um, notion? Uh, I, I really, you know, have trouble understanding that, um, specifically with how society is supposed to run with no hierarchy. Um, you know, we have different personality types, whether someone studies on uh, Migs Breyers or 
or if they study Enneagrams, there are different personality types who are better at certain types of functions than others. And I think having a functional hierarchy, which doesn't seek to dominate people, but actually allows people to actually do their absolute best, is very important. And that's how you get good functional systems that actually accomplish things. And this non hierarchy thing doesn't. And then what's, we have to ever ask the question is besides the value system that would produce the non hierarchy crusader, what society does this person have to come from to even conceive of a notion of non hierarchy? What ideology uh, perhaps doesn't follow non hierarchy but tries to justify itself off of such a notion that everyone is their own individual and can, and can just do whatever they want regardless of the rest of society. And that is actually capitalism. Capitalism justifies itself often on this notion that there is no such thing as society. All we are, are that society is an abstract thing, and all we are are individuals. And you know, somehow the uh, market is just the um, clearinghouse for all individual wants. And this is um, justified under the delusion that we don't have social relationships with all individuals just have their own relationships with money. And if we really think about it, under capitalism, we don't think of ourselves as having a social relationship with someone else if we go out and buy something. When in fact, the every act of purchasing something represents a social relationship that we have with innumerable people within manufacturing, production, and distribution. Instead, we internalize it as our own personal relationship with money and that object. And from this mindset that we all have our just individual relationships with our money and objects comes this way of thinking that all there are are individuals. So this non-hierarchy notion that there's just individuals, no one can tell me what to do, it's really an attempt to take um, the capitalism propaganda and try to make it work in another way. Because yeah, the non-hierarchy crusader is very well aware that capitalism is a hierarchical structure. But uh, while they will fight against the authoritarian hier uh, hierarchy in capitalism, they will actually attempt to create what the capitalism apologist has initially attempted to deliver to them capitalism apologist, the Ron Paul person, like these uh, type person, they're going to attempt to promise you a non-hierarchical system, which is clearly going to collapse as capitalism is totally hierarchical. But that's the point, is that the non-hierarchy crusader buys into the notion that oh, that there's going to be a system and no one can tell me what to do, and, and, and so forth. Uh, completely uh, absurd. Again, you get these uh, activist groups that cannot do something. Um, you have notions of free speech that um, are completely out of context, where people um, will claim that they can just about, that they can do just about anything that they want, say anything they want, attack anyone in any manner, and how dare you stop them because that's an infringement on you know on their rights, and you're creating a hierarchy. You know, Reese, like a week ago, I posted on a particular Facebook page to see if any people would be interested in having certain types of meetings. And someone responded that, well, there can't be a hierarchy involved. And, you know, if we take this to its logical extreme, where are we going to go? If I, have, I want to have a meeting on whatever, and someone walks in and starts masturbating in front of everyone, is that supposed to be a justification that um, you're imposing your hierarchy that this behavior should not be allowed? I mean, could you, can you possibly host a meeting and say, oh, this meeting is actually about something? Because, yeah, I, I've been at activist meetings where people will comment and they will start bringing up uh, the most nonsensical stuff complete tangents, completely irrelevant to what the group is supposed to be talking about, but it's like everyone is valid. We have to listen to this person. And oh, I have to add this, the really ridiculous thing that these people do, and you know you're dealing with one of these people, is when they start going off on how you cannot name a group anything. You can't name any group. I, and they'll, they'll walk into your group and they'll say, well, I'm interested in what you're doing and I want help, but I can't really be part of your group because um, you have a name and I can't be part of anything with a name because if you give, because I'm part of a group with a name, then suddenly the name is controlling me and they're telling me how to think and I'm part of a cult. So, uh, no name. But, so I'm not going to be part of your group. 
but I'm going to come to your meetings, and I'm going to tell you what to do, and I'm going to crusade against your leaders because you shouldn't have any leaders, but I cannot be part of your group officially because it has a name, and we can't have anything with a name. This is so fucking stupid. I, I, I'm sorry. What am I supposed to say? You know, the, their basic thought process is this, that you have some type of cult, like the Catholic Church or whatever, and they will deduce that the reason why people in the Catholic Church are dogmatically following a rigid line of thought and are not questioning it is because the Catholic Church has a name. Therefore, they have to get rid of all names of groups. Get rid of all groups, ideally, but get rid of all the names. And next, there are, you get attacked because you want to name the most dinky group that has 10 people. You know, you want to give a committee a name. I want to make YouTube videos with someone. We're going to have this YouTube committee. Oh, you're calling yourself a name. You're dogmatically controlling people. And like, how do you function around these people? I guess that is my, my point is that they're nuts, but they are so dogmatically rigid in their faith-based notion of getting rid of all groups, all hierarchies, that um, they can't even take steps to, like, you know, activist against legitimate things. That it's just, it's, just, it's you. You cannot be an activist around these people. They will destroy you. They they will go. They they seem to go to the ends of the earth in order to destroy legitimate activist groups and uh, if you're actually in an activist group and you see these people you have to get rid of them they tell you they want to go go don't talk to them don't entertain them don't be nice don't try to emphasize with them just let them go because there, there is no end they they will destroy you I've seen it hey bye